Steve. I got a jar here. We'll call mm -hmm. we'll call it a pickle jar. Yeah, yeah. You know, because um, pickle jars are hard to open. That's right. They, they take be. a lot of they take a lot of torque. That's right. Okay. So I want you to show me okay. how you would open this pickle jar most sure. effectively. All okay, right? sure. Well, first thing I'd do is I'd put my palm on top of it, like this, and then I get my elbow up if I really need to put some power into it and turn the elbow down. And, oh, finally got it. Okay, that was tight. So I really had to put a lot of elbow grease into that, right? So I'm twisting the wrist, palm down. See how I'm twisting this way. That's right, you're twisting this way. This way. That, Correct. So that way. this is how we're gonna start our downswing. Right. This is our introduction In, to the hand action. Portion. That's right. We're gonna be freely and fully throwing the club head or releasing the club head from the top of the swing. Now here's some more misinterpretation, confusion here, but in, in a couple different ways. So you see how I'm opening the pickle jar. Now this is the natural way to open a pickle jar. Why? Because it's the best. It's, it's easy to tell without knowing any science or anything that I'm not going to open a pickle jar any other way. This is the most powerful way to open a pickle jar or open any kind of peanut butter jar, anything that's really tight. Um, and this is the way we're going to start our hand action on the way down. Now, you see on my elbows up, I can, put, I can put a lot more power into it through the external rotation and the adduction of my upper arm this way, okay, and I can really get that into the movement. So, as you know on the, from the forums and on the internet, there's a, uh, quite another technique that's being offered as something that Mike may have changed to uh, much later in life. Now. I don't believe he ever did. Uh, when he taught me, he was 83, he was releasing the club this way. When he was 90, we saw him on a video with Mike Dunaway, mm -hmm. still <coughs> talking about rolling the forearm and cocking the wrist this way, just as like we'd mm -hmm. be opening the pickle jar this way. And then we have a friend, a mutual friend, who was with Mike in his last days learning the swing from him, and Mike still was teaching the same thing. So. Unless he changed back and forth in the middle there, I just don't see, you know, he hit all, he hit all his best drives, his long 400, 500 yard drives with this action. Mm -hmm. This action, the ulnar deviation of the wrist in this manner, aided by the rotation of the humerus, is a more powerful move. Now I'll show you how the other hand action would work if it was put on a pickle jar. You'd put your hand on the side of the jar in a flex position this way, and you would try to turn it this way. So I'm seeing less torque applied. I don't think if this jar was really sealed tight that I would be able to put enough with the extension of my wrist here, or sometimes Mike would call this dorsiflexion. Mm -hmm. There just isn't as much power in a flexion to dorsiflexion move as there is in a radial flex to ulnar flex position this right. way, aided by the rotator cuff. I got a lot of torque this way. I don't have as much there. So let's show that. Let's show it in golf. golf yeah, we'll show it in golf terms this now. Could be, would this be a good drill for all, to go into our cabinets and grab peanut butter and jelly jars and just twist them? Well, at least, a, at least to get the idea of what yeah. we want to be doing with the wrist on the way down. Sure. And this leads us right into the release of the club head. So the method in question that we're talking about, and this is the hand on the side of the jar, would look more like that. With a very, almost a shut club face that you've actually manipulated with your hands and not with your body turn. Well, more manipulated, right? That way. Now, this would be taken all the way back to the top in the other method. Right. Okay. Now, I believe Mike did play with this idea, but only for the smallest chip. Yes. For example, I've got a five iron, but we can do a five iron chip. Mm -hmm. Mike did this on chip shots quite commonly, but only to take it back about that far. Right. See, Mike knew, he was a very, very smart guy, the smartest guy I've ever met. He knew that that, that other hand action was not as powerful, but it could be highly accurate in a small swing like this. So Mike was a smart guy. He eliminated all the moving parts and he would just, cock the wrist here, and then 
uncock it through the ball. Now I didn't mean to hit that ball. Try to do a practice swing with that. Now you you'd be at home. What would you be saying if I'm just if I'm actually releasing the club head on a chip? You'd be like screaming at me, wouldn't you? At first, you'd be like, "My God, you gotta you gotta hinge and hold." That's what all the pros do, right? Mm -hmm. You hinge and hold. But uh, Mike on a chip shot, and this is the only way he would ever use this wrist action, is a shot like that. And once again, that's just because we're not concerned about power here. That's right. It's just, and Mike, Mike chipped in a lot. Yes, but we Mike are. Mike was not a good putter, yeah. but he chipped in a lot. We are concerned with keeping the blade of the club very square to the hole back right. and forth. We don't need to open and shut it like we do with the, with the palm on top. So now let's go back into this hand action and how it completes a full semicircle of the club head around. When I like to, I, I like to teach people this way, right out in front of their face at sternum level, have them put the club this way. Mm -hmm. This way it's right out in front of them and they can see they're gonna try to swing on a horizontal plane at first so they can see the correct hand action. I'll have them cock the club into this position here there's that flat left wrist again. My right hand is in that hammer lock throw position, real powerful. And you can see I've made a 90 degree rotation from the shoulder all the way down of my forearm and my upper arm bone, about 45 in each. Okay? Now, if we, if we only isolated down to these four joints, two wrists, two elbows. This would be a perfect golf swing if it was put with the right posture, right? Now, here's the hand action that we're looking for. Out to here. Now explain what happens, Jerry. There's, there's my pickle jar opening right mm -hmm. there. Watch that left hand right there. You see the, you see that the right elbow is straightening. The right wrist is going from a pin back position straightening out. But look what happens when I get to about 70 degrees, Jerry. I can't go any farther on this. My left wrist is now stuck. So show, show everybody what I'm going to do next so here comes, to, get the, to get this club going here comes around. The, here comes the rotation of the right forearm okay. as it passes the left. Right. And and it just keeps right on going. Motion. And we end up in a perfect mirror image to where we started. So I've taken the club and I've thrown it around a half circle. And this is like that. Yes. This is where we want to talk. I, I want to talk about the throwing motion yes. here. How it is truly, and most of, of Mike Austin people that, that profess his method mm -hmm. know of the throwing motion, what he's professed, and not the conscious delay of That's the right. lag That's right. into the golf ball. So let's show but them the, now. Yeah, the confusion is what exactly mm -hmm. does that mean as the club, the club actually does get thrown. That's what it means. Yes. Just like you're taking your right hand, you are flinging a rock out into a lake and skipping it. Let's give me that same position. Club straight okay. out in front of you. Yep. Okay. Just go ahead and make a, make a turn. Go ahead. Okay, now I'll... We'll... Yeah, go ahead and go to the back there. So from this position, you're not going to take the butt of the club and pull it into the back of that golf ball. Because no. if you did, I mean, your hands are going to pass the golf ball. You're going to come right. to a position where... You're gonna, you're gonna have to fall backwards to actually hit the, the golf ball. The only off. way I'm gonna hit this ball from here is if you go ahead and let go. Yep. I'm gonna be so late, that ball is going to the right and it's going off the heel. Right. So what we're talking about, it truly is a throwing motion. So go ahead and go to the top mm -hmm. of your swing. Just as you're standing straight up and down, Steve, mm -hmm. go to mm -hmm. go to this position here. Oh, straight up. Straight up and down. Okay. Level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's kind of what we're looking at. Look how far the left arm is removed from where the golf ball is. Mm -hmm. About five hours. Yep. Look where the shaft is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about twice as far right. as the left arm. Okay. Right. So we have to have this catch up to this left arm as we get to the golf ball. And that is a throwing motion. It is not and a it can't be pull. delayed. It is not delayed. With, with the compound pivot that we showed everybody right. earlier does not give you any time to try to hold or delay that action. It has to be here and this is what a good another good drill is for people who aren't getting the throw from the top is taking it back and doing this. There's my same semicircle. I'm just changing where the fulcrum is and swinging that head around that left ulnar bone here. Mm -hmm. That's where the secondary fulcrum is right 
there. Of course, Steve is making no pivot. Let just showing. That's you why it's a cast. Right. But that's why it's a cast. So yeah. if you were to show me, show me someone who casts the club, I'll show you somebody who doesn't shift and turn. Exactly.